Hello, my name is Pastor Joe Azapardi, an associate pastor from the Springwood Adventist Church in Brisbane, Australia. For the last few days this week, we've been contemplating Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And as the Prince of Peace, Jesus has a lot to say on how to have a blessed life. The Sermon on the Mount begins with what are known as the Beatitudes, which are ways that one can live a life of blessedness. Beginning with, blessed are the poor in spirit. Having a blessed life begins with acknowledging that we need God and asking Him to fill us spiritually. This leads to mourning the current state of affairs in the world and then choosing to combat it by giving hope to others through a spirit of gentleness. Today's our fourth day in the series, and we will be contemplating Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. I don't know about you, but when I'm having a hard day, there are certain things that I crave. Some of my friends crave coffee, some of my friends crave exercise. Me personally, being a sweet tooth, I love chocolate, ice cream, cookies, not in any particular order. In fact, I would think that the best dessert would be if you combine all three, have some chocolate ice cream with chunks of chocolate and, and cookies all mixed through it. Not very healthy, I know, but that's one of the things I would crave. I have other cravings too. As an introvert, having time to myself is something I crave, especially in this time of isolation, being stuck inside with, with my loving family. I love them to bits, but as an introvert, I crave having some time to myself. I also crave quality one-on-one -on -one time with people. For me, that is something that fills me up. Now, there is something else that I crave, something that's much healthier than the sugary stuff that I often crave. Thinking back to how sinful the world is and, and having a mourning that things are not the way they ought to be, another product of seeking God is having a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, having a craving for justice taking place, for having goodwill being put on all people. I think it's why the idea of heroes and superheroes have always had a place in the human spirit. Regardless of the culture, regardless of the time period, you'll find stories of heroes going all the way back in history. The idea of someone who swoops in and makes things right, or accomplishes something that seems impossible, whether it's seeing bullies or criminals or dictators or all of the above get the justice that they deserve, or seeing someone in a dire situation being saved. Maybe both. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus reads out loud a section of Isaiah 61, a prophecy, which says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release of the captives, and to recover the sight of the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Now, as Jesus finishes reading it, he closes up the scroll and he says, what I have just read has come about in reality. Now, when we read the Gospels and we look at all the righteous things that Jesus did, it's hard to deny that. We see stories of Jesus healing people who had incurable diseases like leprosy, where they were ostracized from society much, not as, as much as what the COVID is today, but people were terrified of those who had leprosy because it was such a contagious disease back then. And Jesus just touches them, does the opposite of what you're supposed to do, and he heals them from the leprosy. Jesus heals those who are crippled. He brings sight to the blind. He speaks up for those who are being oppressed. He even raises up from the dead those who have died. We have stories like the story of, of the little girl who had died and Jesus raises from the dead. Or the 
the young man who had been dead for a few days at a funeral procession. When we read all the things that Jesus actually did, and when we examine the life of Jesus and see that he did nothing wrong, and that he stood up for people his entire life, and did everything he can to pull them out of the hard times that they had, and he saves us, it's difficult to disagree that Jesus was a man who was righteous. Jesus is the hero that humanity has been awaiting for. And although Jesus did die, he also was resurrected. And now he is waiting for just the right time to come back and rid the world of all the injustice and make everything as it should be. He's coming back to permanently bring about justice, to bring about righteousness on the earth. Which is why Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, because they will be satisfied. When he comes back, our craving for righteousness and justice will be satisfied. The challenge question for today is, what are you doing to help bring about righteousness to those around you? Now, I'm not suggesting that the answer is to running around in a costume looking for bad guys to stop, although that would be quite entertaining. But maybe adding to the question, what am I doing, what are you doing in our normal day-to-day -day routine that shows that we are following the righteousness of Jesus? It doesn't mean criticizing people. The only people you'll notice in the Bible that Jesus openly criticizes were actually the people who were supposed to be the very models for society. How are we modeling Christ's righteousness to the world as individuals? Can I pray with you? Father in heaven, I thank you for those who are watching and their families. I thank you for my family. And I ask that you would help us to be people who crave righteousness. Help us to be people who are righteous, people who show hope to the world by being gentle, who when they see injustices being done, we will stand up for those who are oppressed. I ask that you would fill us with your peace today and help us to have the blessings that you promise us when we put our faith in you. Thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tomorrow, we will be ending this week's devotionals with Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. God bless and have a great day.